important matter and we're in a very important location. Uh, you're standing in this most beautiful building, the Huntington Center. For longer than two years, hundreds of skilled workers, skilled tradesmen, uh, built this beautiful place for all of us in the region to enjoy. When they did it, they had good living wages, uh, they had good health care, they were provided strong safety standards in order to do the job that was done to, to build this building that holds about 8,000 people on a regular basis. These are the kind of policies that strong labor unions uh, provide for the workforce and the local elected leadership works very hard with labor to make sure that these conditions and these standards and these policies are intact so that good government, good economy can happen, and good things can happen for quality of life here in Toledo and Lucas County. We're here today to provide an earful in a very important way to make sure that policies don't deteriorate um, as we feel like they have. We're living um, in a situation where we believe America is faced with policies that are challenging our basic quality of life, that is not acceptable, and we want to continue to work hard to make sure that the message gets out there that we, uh, the only way to keep Toledo, Lucas County, and the region growing is to have strong policies that benefit all of us involved. Um, I'm going to share just a couple of points, and then others are going to speak, as to uh, types of policies that we think that are happening in our country that are hurtful to people that live in our community. Uh, just recently, there was an attack on the skilled tradesmen um, to be able to hold and have strong apprenticeship programs provided by the trades. That was trying to get weakened so that the skilled work and the skilled training wasn't done by the skilled trades in our community. That's not acceptable. Take our Great Lakes. It is, it is upon us that we have some of the most serious uh, al toxic algal bloom and our lake is in jeopardy. We had to, on the backs of the citizens of Toledo and Lucas County, find our own sources and nutrient concerns and point those out so we could start to create change. But the federal government hasn't come to our aid to help make sure that we have the resources that we need in order to uh, protect our lake. GLRI funding, which is a source that we've used for years, has been uh, threatened to be cut drastically. Um, this is very harmful to us. Climate change, as you know by this administration, has been completely dismissed um, and, and discussed in a way that says that, it, in fact, there is no such thing as climate change. We all know that's not true. Uh, many other programs are in jeopardy. Policies are very, very hurtful to our area that are being impacted right now. Take SNAP, which is often called food stamp programs. Many programs are being cut. Many people are getting cut off the rolls of being eligible for food stamps. I think it's about 900 people just in Lucas County alone that have recently been cut off of this program. That is critically damaging. It also hurts the local economy because people don't have the means to, get, uh, to go shop and to spend money in our stores and in our local stores to keep the economy strong. Senior citizens are seeing, a, 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 are very concerned prescription costs and other areas that, that um, are being impacted. There's policies, some of our local uh, leaders that work with our, that are our advocates for seniors, say that to try to get some of the equipment that they need used to be a two week turnaround. Now it's as much as a six month turnaround because no one is sure what's happening with programs that help our seniors stay mobile. Immigration, a major issue here. 
We know that the, those who come and uh, create and start jobs in our community help the economy grow. We know that there is great regard for the amount of uh, business startups that occur from a person um, of immigrant status, and we know that that, in fact, contribute huge amounts of money to make sure that we have a strong economy. These are some of the policies. We could go on. Uh, I know um, Pete and certainly Congresswoman Kaptur will share more details uh, of some of our concerns. Bottom line, um, we believe in strong policies that benefit our community. We believe we're faced with much deterioration under the current administration. <coughs> thank you, Tina. Uh, thank you, Congresswoman. Thank you, our city council representatives, Yvonne and Larry Sykes, and our friends from labor, as always. Um, you know, place matters. Place matters when messages get delivered. In approximately 80 hours from now, uh, this hall will most likely be filled uh, to hear the president's message in our place. And, and what message could he possibly have for us that counters the fact that his policies have failed us in Lucas County? Our poverty rate still hovers around 20%. It's not getting any better. Our public transportation systems, TARDA and others, have lacked the federal funding it needs to get to people to the many jobs. You'll hear Mr. Trump, I'm sure, tout the jobs issue. You can't get, if, a job doesn't do any good if you can't get there. We lack some of the infrastructures, infrastructure to get people to the jobs. We have not had strong housing policy uh, from HUD to create the housing needs. Um, and when it comes to the Great Lakes, it comes real simple to me. This county has had to sue the Trump administration Environmental Protection Agency for it to enforce its own Clean Water Act. We as a local community have had to sue the federal government for enforcement of a law that's been on the books for over 40 years. So these are failed policies for Lucas County. So why here? Why in the Huntington Center? When this building opened 10 years ago, it's a place of civic pride, and it still remains a place of civic pride. Thank you for telling us how uh, commissioner how it got built but to this day this is a very personal place for the commissioners and for our, our community we built this for a place of fun uh, a place of enjoyment uh, a place of community gathering and I am concerned uh, about what message may be delivered in this very building that is our building that is the heart of our build of our community what message will will be coming for us so, so why here you know Earlier this year, Lucas County became only the second county in the United States and the first one in, this, in, uh, in Ohio to be certified a welcoming county. And I must say, Mr. Trump, your appearance here certainly tests our ability to be welcoming. But when we sign up for something and we say we are, we're going to do that. We're going to be a welcoming community, even though your policies tests our resolve on that. But Here's how I think we can overcome some of that. And I just have a, a, a few remarks for you, Donald J. Trump, President of the United States. You know, you're going to come to our building, but I'd like, you, I'd like you to do us a favor, though, when you come to our building. I'd like you to do us a favor, though. When you get on this stage, don't talk in a way that promotes racism. Donald Trump, I'd like you to do us a favor, though. When you come to our community, don't preach a message of hate. That is not who we are. Donald J. Trump would like you to do us a favor, though. When you come to our building, respect our norms. We are a welcoming community. We embrace minorities. We embrace working class people. We embrace everybody that comes here. Do us a favor, though. Respect our norms in our building. You are guests in our house. We are going to respect you. Could you please do us a favor, though, and respect the values that you see everybody up here uh, portraying today? That would be crucially important. Here's what we do know. There's a study done by the Washington Post released earlier uh, in, in March of 2019 that said, of all the counties that the Trump administration, the Trump campaign then went to um, during the 16 campaign, hate crimes rose 226 percent after that visit. Do us a favor, though, Donald J. Trump. Do not have that statistic come to Lucas County. We do not have hate crimes here. Do not use your presence here to start that. And, and, I'll, and I'll finish with this. Donald Trump, do us a favor, though. I know you don't like to send money where it was promised, but could you at least pay your bill 
to this arena before you leave, please do us those favors. Thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, uh, Commissioner Gherkin, and also uh, Commissioner uh, Skeldon Wozniak, and I want to thank Councilwoman uh, Von Harper uh, for joining us today, and also Councilman Larry Sykes, and our fine representatives from the Building Trades who build America forward starting right here in Lucas County. Thank you to the Free Press. We respect you here, and we value your service to our community and to our country. Um, it's very historic that the President of the United States has chosen to make his kickoff political visit of 2020 to our community, literally kicking off his campaign here in Toledo, a community that he has not helped. I've asked myself, how is he going to get here? Is he going to be flown from the airport and land on top of the building or a building near here? Um, will he be driven in? I really don't know the answer, but I can guarantee you he will not set foot on the streets of Toledo. And I'd like to invite the President back to our region to walk with me through the neighborhoods of this community and to sail with me on Lake Erie and understand the challenges that our community faces and how he isn't helping us. Recent statistics show that the state of Ohio for the first time uh, since 2009 will actually not be gaining jobs. The state of Ohio will actually lose jobs under his presidency. And I can tell you that every single year of his presidency, the national debt has gone up. And foreign interests are buying larger and larger shares of our debt, the primary one being China, to whom now the American people pay billions and billions of dollars in interest every year. They are taking larger pieces of our hide. And so we say to the president, why don't you provide balanced budgets to the Congress of the United States? And why don't you provide budgets that help places like we live in? Donald Trump lives in two places besides the White House. One is the Trump Tower uh, in New York. He's just announced he wants to leave there uh, completely and go to Florida, to Mar-a-Lago. Well, I can tell the people of our region that the Trump Tower in New York on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan is, has the top 1% of earners in our country. The average uh, salary, the average household income of someone who lives in that neighborhood is well over $169,000 a year. The incomes of people in our community are a third of that, uh, if that. And so he is coming to a very different place in America. We know that many times in his wake, after he leaves a place, violence happens. We want none of that here. We want no violence in our community. We want no hate. We want the president, rather than shouting, to be caring in the way that he delivers his remarks to this community. I would ask the president to reimburse the county of Lucas and the city of Toledo for all of the security costs that will be attendant to his visit. We have a very able force, but through his Department of Homeland Security, which Congress, at his request, has increased substantially, almost doubled, uh, we're asking him to direct funds to pay uh, for the security forces that will be required both in our county and our city to handle his visit. If you look at the programs that the President um, has submitted to Congress for consideration, here in the city of Toledo, for example, without the House of Representatives, with concurrence with some members of the Senate, the funds that the city of Toledo would normally get for community development and for economic development to help us retool and improve our community, the president in his budget asked for their elimination. Think about that. So for the city of Toledo to pay for the cost of police, for the county of Lucas to try to help invest and to create new jobs here, if it were not, frankly, for Democrats in Congress, those programs would not exist. We would lose millions and millions and millions more dollars in this community. The commissioner has talked about Lake Erie and about the water plant here uh, in our community, in our sewage treatment plant. The president has done nothing to help us to pay the costs of trying to clean up the effluents that go into Lake Erie and to help our city of Toledo, 
which supplies water to the entire region on an emergency basis to make it more financially possible for us to make the investments necessary to keep our water clean. Used to be the federal government paid 80 percent of the cost of water investment in communities like Toledo. That number years ago, because of Republicans in Congress, the record will show, was put at 50-50. But when a community like ours has had an emergency, an emergency, as Flint, Michigan had an emergency, the federal government, in my opinion, should pay 90 to 100 percent of those costs to help those communities to retool faster. This administration actually, as hard as this is to believe, recommended a 95 percent cut in the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, which we depend upon for cleaning up all of our streams, and uh, not just in Toledo uh, and Ohio, but throughout the Great Lakes. And we had to restore those funds in the Congress of the United States and through other programs at the Environmental Protection Agency. He has done nothing to help us meet the true tests of water purification in this region. I would like the President to come to our water purification facility with me. I would like him to help me help this community rather than fight me every single day he's in office to provide clean water to the people of this region in perpetuity. If I think about <laughs> other bills that are sitting in the Congress of vital importance to this community, you have to look no further than H.R. 3, the measure that we passed in the House of Representatives to lower the cost of medicines of prescription drugs to the people of the United States. That bill which passed the House, is sitting in the Senate. And the President and Mitch McConnell, the Senator from Kentucky who heads the uh, majority in the Senate, are sitting on that bill. The President promised he would lower the cost of medicines to the American people. He has not kept his promise. Okay? The President promised us a jobs and infrastructure bill to do exactly the kind of work that Commissioner Wozniak referenced, and that is to rebuild America from coast to coast and the federal government would take the big lift on that to help our local communities, all right? Where's the bill? Mr. President, you promised us a jobs and infrastructure bill. Where is it? If we look back at this community's needs, the president will not meet us where we live. He will come in here, think about it, in this bubble, whether he flies in or is driven in. He will make his speech really a performance and we ask him to keep his rhetoric high, not low, in this community, show that he cares for the people of this community, and tell us specifically what he is going to do to help us, a region of America that has had so much job washout, and we have had to readjust and to reinvest with our own dollars, with minimal help from the federal government. He might say something like, well, I just supported the passage of the USMCA. Uh, the U.S.-Canada-Mexico trade agreement. That will not stop the outsourcing of jobs in this community to penny wage environments. And I would say to the President, Mr. President, if you really think that's going to work and you say that Mexico will enforce its laws, well then will you help me? Will you help me deal with the government of Mexico and after 10 years get adjudication in the case of the murder of Santiago Cruz a young Mexican national who was trained in this community to go back to Mexico and tell his fellow field workers you don't have to pay a bounty of $8,000 to a coyote to bring you across the border. For that, he was bludgeoned to death in Monterey, Mexico, 10 years ago. There has been no prosecution, there has been no arrest, there has been no justice in the case of Santiago Cruz. So, Mr. President, if you really want to help us, and help our community and help our continent create good jobs where people don't lose their lives, because they are fighting for decent wages in a place that does not enforce its laws, help me with the prosecution of the case of Santiago Cruz. I would say to the people of Toledo who might want to wander down here uh, this week, help our first responders. Stay home, watch it on TV if you must, but stay cool. Stay cool, keep our community at peace. If you want to do something to help, and help our community and help our country, I would ask all religious leaders in our community of all faith expressions to work with their memberships to hold prayer services in their respective uh, houses of worship. And if you are at home and you just simply want to stay at home, which is okay with me, light a candle. 
Light a candle for the highest aspirations of this country. Light a candle for peace in our world. Light a candle that we, wherever we exist in our own environments, will spread goodwill, not just across our own community, but across our country and world. We are the leader of the free world. People across our country, people across our world, are looking for America to aspire to the highest values to which she has been committed. Liberty and justice for all, equality, and as others have referenced this morning, the fair treatment of all individuals, regardless of race, color, creed, whatever continent they might have come from, that we here in the greater Toledo area are a welcoming community and a community that values every human life. We expect the president to expect every human life as we do. Thank you so very much for being here this morning. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you. Oh, he's right there. Let's go. Right. I'll be quick. Good. Yeah. Great to be in our house. Yeah. Love you. I know that. No, we can. Yeah. We could. 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 We could